doing all the cool stuff. All right, so. Hello, everybody. My name is Mookie. Or Queenie. Or Jimmy, or whoever else I happen to be at the time. You may have seen this. I had a cabbage one there on the con earlier on today. Being thoroughly obnoxious with her glasses on, and I think I left my glasses. So sorry. Freudian slip in the room. So, you all have fursuits? Who has fursuits? Who doesn't? One single who doesn't have a fursuit and maybe wants to know how to look after it and get it going. So, um, I'm going to start from the ground floor and work my way up. And if you've heard this all before, stop and let me know. So, can I get an idea of how long people have owned fursuit for? So, under a year. Oh, wow. Cool. Great. So, if I show you this, would you know what this Good. I just bought mine about a month. Congrats. <laughs> and wow. this. You win. Alright, so there's a lot of information online about first suit maintenance. You've just spent, congratulations by the way, you've just spent probably the largest sum of money you're ever going to spend before you buy your own car or your own house on a custom piece of artwork that you're going to want to try and keep for a long period of time. So this panel is going to be about helping you maintain that piece of where is the soft jazz coming from? <laughs> is it just me? No, it's been doing that for a while now. I mean, I don't mind soft jazz, but <laughs> welcome to the first suit maintenance 101 panel with soft jazz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is the hotel's way of making sure that we can't put any of this online because it'll get DCMA, DCMA taken. <laughs> so, as I was saying, you just spent a huge amount of money on either making your own suit or buying your own suit. And I'm going to guess here that the majority of you here have purchased a suit, not made a suit. Anyone here ever tried to make a suit? Good. <laughs> so, this panel will be the bare minimum that you need to get going to get by. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Who here can sew? Okay. So sewing is something we'll come to in a minute. Hey! Hello, bye, hi. Come on, come on in. I thought I'd see you later on. So, um, why do we need to look after our fursuits? Shout reasons at me. Will they last longer? Expensive. They last, last longer. longer. I don't want them to look terrible in photos. You don't want them to look terrible in your photos? Has nobody seen the brush your freaking suit me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really old now. Like, I feel so old I've been in the fandom so long you guys are going, what? I don't remember that. So, a brushed suit always looks better than an unbrushed suit. A suit that is looked after will last you longer. There's one final reason that we look after our suits and we wash them and we care for them. And you might get a whiff as I get her out of the bag because I wore her earlier and I didn't brush her on purpose. Who wants to be a musky husky? <laughs> Not me, okay? This suit, well, it looks okay, right? But if you brushed it out, and I'm quite fastidious about brushing, she would look a whole lot better. All right. So, the first thing you need to know about Suit Care 101 is know how your suit was made. I don't mean know the stitching or the exact technique that was used to make the suit look the way it looks. I'm talking about what type of head do you have? Is your head a resin-based head? Is your head a foam-based head? Or is it based on a helmet? And if you watch online, there's loads of videos of loads of different ways you can make your fursuit head. But talk to your maker and find out how your head was made. What type of head do you have? 
And the next thing from your, your, your mouth should be, how can I look after this? Ask your maker. If your maker is worth anything, they will go, I guarantee my suits if they are looked after in this way. Some suit makers will go, your suit is guaranteed if you put it in the washing machine, it's guaranteed washing machine safe, and if it breaks in the washing machine, I will fix it. Some makers go, if you put this in a washing machine, I will kill you. Or they'll say, you're on your own. Some suits, like my other suit, Jimmy Changa Fox, can go in the washing machine because there's very little to go wrong. We'll come to that in a second about how you can wash them, what you need to do to wash them. But you need to know if there's anything that your maker needs you to stay clear of. A good example of this is Queenie's, uh, this bit of Queenie's eye and this little marking on her cheek have been airbrushed. Do you all know that if you have an airbrushed suit, you shouldn't show it a washing machine, right? You know that. That is because the paint can run, it's generally not dye fast, and then you end up with a blotchy suit. Alright, so, first thing you need to get if you have a suit is a brush. Now, lots of people online, I apologize, I haven't pulled this up. Lots of people online will tell you that you could get a slicker brush. Who's been recommended a slicker brush before? Right, does anyone, can anyone tell me what a slicker brush does? What's its purpose? Not in a fursuit world, in a dog world, or a horse world, or anyone here have dogs or horses, or? It, um, it removes like loose fur. It removes loose fur and it unmats stuff by literally pulling stuff out. And if you look at someone who has a, um, if you look at someone who has a uh, slicker brush and their fursuit, you may notice bald spots after a while. Especially if you have a bodysuit, um, the bits that get really tangled up include under your arms, around your crotch, butts, and legs. They regularly get really, really um, matted. And then when you get a slicker brush, you use a slicker brush and you're going and you're using the slicker brush and you're pulling it so that the tines are going down as you're pulling them, you will pull out huge chunks of fur and then you'll have a bold fursuit. Now some people say, just do it the other way. Who's been told to brush backwards? Right. So. One of the things going around on the interwebs is that if you brush backwards, i.e., instead of slicker brushes have like little angled ends to them, those metal prongs have little angled ends, and if you pull them down, you pull out fur. Some people say, well, if you turn it round so that they, so you're doing that, it won't pull fur out. But the reality is it will. So what you need instead is one of these. Different people call it different things, but it's effectively a very hard bristle brush. Now, hard bristle brushes don't pull out anything that isn't already loose. And to be frank, if you brush your suit regularly, you shouldn't get a whole load of mats. And the rule is, you should brush your suit when you put it on, or before you put it on, you should brush your suit after you take it off. If you do that and you store your suit properly, then you're gonna have very few problems in the long term. So, I'm gonna demonstrate on this head here. Um, do you know what I mean if I say with the fur or against the fur? Does everyone know what that means? So with the fur literally means you're following the line of, the, of the way that the fur naturally won't pull off. So when you're brushing a suit, you should always brush down in the direction that the fur wants to go. And with these, can you see I'm picking up a little bit, a little bit of fur. But if I was using a slicker brush, 
this would be hugely, hugely much more amount of fur on here. So, with her hair, again, I'm pulling down on her cheeks. Can you see the fur goes that way? So, you pull, and the same thing here. I'm going to go up, so the fur will go back from the nose. So, she's already starting to look better, right? And if you use short, you use short, quite forceful um, movements, it allows you to get rid of any tangles that have really nasty tangles. It allows you to line the hair up, but at the same time, <clears throat> it avoids pulling out hair that you don't need to be pulling out. It's like brushing a dog, okay? Does anybody, has anybody here tried to brush a dog that hasn't been brushed in like a year? It's nasty, right? It sucks. It sucks. The dog growls at you, it doesn't like it, you don't like it, you have a bad time. Cats are different because cats are special. Um, old cats, not so much. Um, but it's the same thing for a real dog as it would be for any fursuit animal. Brush regularly, short, short directional uh, sweeps with a very hard brush. I mean, this is a very hard, if I put my, you see how it's, it's not easily deforming. Buy this in PetSmart really easily, really, really cheaply. All right, same thing applies on the bodysuit. If I leave Queenie here, can, can everyone see her? Pretty much, do we bring her a bit closer? I don't know why they gave me a thing here. But, but, um, the same thing. Will you stay put? Her padding's still in. So, same thing. Small, directional strokes. And then, you see how it starts to lay a lot better. All right, I'll come back to her in a second. So, brush before you put your suit on. Wearing your suit, what is your suit gonna feel like? What's it gonna look like? Sweaty and mangled together. Who said that? But you're right. <laughs> yeah. Sweaty and mangled together. I'm sweating right now because I've been running around all morning doing crazy stuff. This is a great thing to have at convention. It's a great thing to have when you're fursuiting. And it's a great way to stop things from smelling. Spray bottle. What's in the spray bottle? Rubbing alcohol. And there's something else. Can anyone smell it? It's a little bit of natural uh, essence, oil, essence oils. Now, if you want your fursuit to smell nice, you put, this is, this is not actually, oh, maybe this is nice tonight. So this is 99% isopropyl alcohol. You don't need 99% isopropyl alcohol. You can dilute this, like one to one or maybe even one to two. So one bottle of this to two bottle, two same bottles of water. And if you want, you can add a little fragrance to the mix. I don't think I have my fragrances with me, but let's have a look. I might have surprised myself. I have lots of alcohol. Lots and lots of alcohol. I feel like you need that for convention. You do. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can find it. I don't have any. I have everything else. I have it in my room. Um, essential oils are great because they give your suit a nice smell. <laughs> I do. I've got orange. And I've got French lavender. And you literally, when you're making me eat, when you're making me stuff up. You fill that up, like maybe a third up with, alcohol, with the rubbing alcohol, fill it all the way up with water, tap water, and then you literally put like two drops bloop, bloop, in there, and it'll be enough to make it smell less like alcohol and more like a summer meadow. What are those um, proportions again? I would normally do, some people say one to four, so one thing of one, one part uh, alcohol to four parts water. I do normally one to three. 
So one part alcohol, three parts water. Doesn't have to be particularly strong. Because all you're doing is you're getting rid of the bacteria that live on you, that transfer to your bodysuit, or your head, or your hands, or your feet. That bacteria is what makes the stink, okay? So by using that alcohol spray, the minute you take your suit off, you're minimizing how much of that bacteria can grow, and it means that your suit doesn't smell bad. It's also healthier. How many of you public suit? Anyone? I haven't gotten mine yet. That's cool. Public suiting is great. Public suiting is messy sometimes because kids come up and they go, ah, ah, and they put their pot, they put their hands all over your suit. So public suiting is slightly different, but if you're a con or you're just you know wearing it at home or whatever, most people will say spray once you're we've done wearing it. You can do that maybe one or two or three times and then you're going to need to wash your suit. So, at a convention, I can show you this really easily and cleanly. Our heads are very important as well. So, what is that? You are such a trashy doll. Right, okay. So, you literally grab your bottle of spray, make sure it actually makes a spray, and then just spray inside your head. I have a fan that I put her over. So I basically stand her on a fan that points upwards and blows upwards. And I point her, I pull her right over the top. The air blows up, fries the suit. The air comes out of the eyes. And you have a nice, reasonably nice smelling head. Now it will work for two or three times and then after that you really are gonna have to wash it. So remember earlier on, I said that you need to know if your maker has said you can wash your suit a particular way or not. So some, some people will say, just make a cold bath with like a cup of very mild detergent in it. Get it all sudsy. Put your suit in your body suit or your head, let it soak, and then wash by hand. Everyone here has washed something by hand, I'm assuming, clothes by hand at some point, right? It's like washing your clothes by hand. And then you need to rinse it. This is really important because fake fur likes to hold on to, to detergent. And if you leave it on that suit, over time that detergent will degrade the, the fibers. <clears throat> so, give it a good wash. Marvel at how dirty the water gets. Empty your bath. Fill it up with cold water. Give it a good you know, scrub in the cold water, rinse it again. I normally rinse like two or three times, if I have time. I did her twice the other day because I was in a hurry. And then you can dry the suit off. We'll come to drying the suit in a second. What about washing machines? Well, does everybody know the thing about you can't use hot water on the first suit? That's technically true. Technically, there are some people who know what they are doing, who use uh, hot water on fursuits, but that's for a very specific reason, and I'll come to that later. But what you do, if you're going to wash your fursuit, body suit, paws, feet, anything that will fit in the washing machine, is turn it inside out if you can. Turn the suit inside out, and put it in so that the backing so that that bit is what's pointing out, okay? That prevents fur from getting caught by the washing machine mechanism, and it also makes it less likely that you're, is that soft jazz again? <laughs> <laughs> like Queenie is screaming at me in my head. I don't know if you know, but Queenie lives inside my head and she screams at me on a regular basis. She gets really excited about stuff like that. Basically, Queenie is a part of my personality I don't like acknowledging. <laughs> but she's getting very excited about the music. Um, so you, you try on your suit inside out. If you have a washing machine that goes like that, like the European style ones, or as I like to call them, real washing machines, they go that way. Generally you won't have too many problems. 
If you have an American style washing machine where it goes like that, and there's a pointy bit in the middle, beware the pointy bit. I've seen several suits that have got wrecked because they got wrapped around the pointy bit. So when you put your suit in, if it's a body suit, make sure you don't put it anywhere near the round bit, the, the bit in the middle. Some people say don't use those washing machines, and I prefer not to use that style of washing machine, I prefer to use the European style. And if you have paws and feet and other small things, does everyone know what a laundry bag is? Get a couple of laundry bags. Put your, your paws in the laundry bag, zip it up. Again, if you invert them, it's really important, especially if you have claws. Because these can get pulled off really easily. So, literally, pull it inside out, put it in the washing machine like that, right? If your washing machine is really good, and it comes out, and it's, um, and it's uh, uh, nice and moderately dry, then you can literally, where did I put the brush? Over here. You can then literally start brushing your paws and putting them on a fan. Now the other thing I sh told you is that you should never wash on hot. Always wash on cold. There are exceptions to those rules, but I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna advocate for those right now because you have to be okay with the basic stuff before you move to the more advanced stuff. So, once you've got your wet suit bits out, you brush them, you're gonna find a fan and put this in front of the fan. Do not put it in front of a heat event. Do not put it by your fire. Do not put it in the dryer. Even if your dryer has a air only setting, do not put it in the dryer. I have seen so many people who put their fursuits in the dryer, thought it was on cold air only, and then come back later to discover it was not. Everyone know what happens when you put fur through a dryer? It melts. It melts, because this is plastic. Everyone knew this, right? It's basically plastic. And when you heat plastics, they heat at different uh, temperatures and then they start to curl. You can rescue them, but it's very difficult. Beyond a certain point, you can't. So, and I'll come to that maybe at the end if people want me to talk about heat and fursuit, because that's a dangerous thing to do, but it can be used in a rescue attack. All right, make sure you come back and turn your fursuit parts over while they're drying and keep brushing them. Every night you're going to come back because as this dries it is going to want to naturally uh, wrinkle slightly. So again, nice short um, brush strokes in line with the fur. Now, <clears throat> remember I said when you've worn your fursuit you should brush it before you put it away? When you wash your fursuit, you should brush it before you put it away, and before you wear it, you brush it before you put it on. If you have a handler, which you all should, get your handler to brush you, okay? And if you're fursuiting with someone else, brush each other's suit. Like if you're wearing a body suit, stand there like that, let your buddy brush you, and then brush your buddy's suit, okay? It works. Um, it is possible to brush your suit independently, but it can be a real pain in the butt. All right, so, let's talk about the heads we can't wash in a washing machine, and we can't wash them in the bath, we don't want to wash them in the bath. Does everyone know what this is? It's Reckon? A, it's, a, it's, a, it's not. It's not a shop vet either. I know the actual name. It's a green machine. It's a little baby green machine. These things are carpet cleaners. They're made by Bissell. I have two of these at home. This one is my carpet cleaner. And then we have a big one because we have, we have animals. Um, in case I accidentally walk chicken poo in the house, which has happened before, or if we have an accident from one of the dogs, we use the big one, which is, it's 
like one of those, we call them rug munchers. It's like the thing that you just like, clean the carpets with. This is like a baby version, okay? It's really awesome. You can buy these online for, if you, look now actually, because Black Friday sales are coming on. You can get these on sale sometimes for as little as 50 bucks. So, you put a tiny amount of very mild laundry detergent in the bottom of this. It's got a little, it's got a little thing here. Formula goes in this bit, water up to the line. It even tells you. You put the cleaning stuff in, and then you put water. Now when you're using, um, I normally use Woolite, right? For Woolite, I'll only go like to there. Because Woolite's really potent, and you don't need a lot of potent stuff on your fursuit. So Woolite up to the top. Put water in here. Help, I put it on this end. And then this end is the dirty water tank. And obviously I'm not going to use it because there's no water in it. But you plug it in, get some towels on the floor, and it's got a little nozzle here that sprays. You see that? It's got a little brush, and then this bit is where it sucks up. So you turn it on, you hold your suit, you spray. Again, you're going to spray with the direction of the fur and slowly draw it back. Give it time to soak in. You don't have to always keep the trigger on. Use your common sense. Because if you keep your finger on that, you'll just have a really wet fursuit head. So spray it, pull it, spray it, pull it, or you can spray and pull as well if you get good. This will allow you to clean the outside of your fursuit and also the inside of your fursuit without putting it in a washing machine or anything like that. This is how I normally clean Queenie. It's also really useful if you have a fursuit that has just been cleaned that you then get nacho cheese on, or ketchup, or whatever else. I've seen it all. You can use one of these to spot clean. It's also really good for your car, right? After you've done using this, there are a couple things you have to do with it. The first thing, obviously empty, Empty this tank and get rid of all of the fur that will accumulate in here. Because if you leave the fur in here, it will pick up the mechanism and it will make it stanky. And then you have a musky husky cleaner, which is worse than a musky husky suit. So make sure you rinse this in thoroughly with lots of water. What do you really do? I put my hand. Thank you. I put my hand on the bottom like this to stop water from coming out the bottom. I'll put the hose in there, let it fill up, and then I will do this, shake it, and let it dry. That normally dislodges most of the fur that gets stuck on this mechanism inside. This, by the way, this thing here, the smoothie thing, it basically fills up, when, as the water fills up, it goes up to the top, and then it turns off the vacuum. So if your thing stops vacuuming, that's why, because it needs changing. Once you clean that out, the next thing you do is you put this under a tap and you run water down through this to clear out anything that's got stuff in there. I can still see a bit of chimichanga in there, so cleaning it, I didn't clean it fully last time. And then, this is the fun bit, you run your tap, you turn on the vacuum, you put clean water all the way through the system into that tank. Once you've got this little clean, then you clean that out one more time, let it all dry out naturally, and your, your cleaner is clean for the next time you want to clean the fursuit. If you don't do this, if your cleaner is not clean, your fursuit cannot be clean. So it's good maintenance. Look after your machine, and they will look after it. All right. Uh, where have I got to? I've done all the other things. All right, so at conventions, I forgot to mention this. Does anyone know what this is? I asked earlier when there were fewer people in the room, but does anyone recognize this? It looks like a hanger. Sorry? It looks like a clothing hanger. It is, but it's a clothing hanger with a dis difference. It's got a fan? It's got a fan in it. These are wetsuit dryers. These are designed to hang with a wetsuit on them. Wetsuits get very 
very heavy. Um, <clears throat> this, this one is Underwater Kinetics, it's the name of it. It comes with a, a socket and a plug and a thing, you plug it in. You hang this up with your bodysuit on, and it blows cold air through the bodysuit and helps the bodysuit dry from the inside out. So if you have one of these blowing on the inside of your suit, and then you have a couple of box fans blowing on your suit, and again, you just keep brushing it as you go. I use these at cons to help dry out the inside of my suit quickly after I've finished fursuiting, because I don't know about you guys, but there's nothing worse for me than getting into a moist fursuit. <laughs> it is the worst. Um, one other thing about cleaning that I didn't mention, if you wear Under Armour or something similar under your suit, you will have less odor issues in general because your sweat is going into the Under Armour, not into the fursuit. Super important because if you do it the other way around, you just, I don't know, wear your underwear, that's it. Everything that you sweat goes into the bodysuit. And you can tell, we've all been to a con before, we've walked in a room, and you're hit with a body odor from hell. And if you are a super taster like I am, it is the most unpleasant thing about the furry fan. Because it's just like, ah. All right, so we talked about brushing, cleaning. Any questions to that point? Cue! All right, so next up. We are going to talk about maintenance of your suit. Whenever you go somewhere with your fursuit, you should have a box or a bag of goodies. Yo. Sorry, I had a question. Okay. Sure. What is the the bad things for hanging a very heavy fursuit on a regular hanger? Yeah, generally you shouldn't hang a wet fursuit on a regular hanger, and you generally shouldn't hang a fursuit if it's really heavy and wet because it will eventually pull the fur and it will um, it will let the, the it will basically um, misshape your suit right it will pull the fibers in the suit so when you hang your suit up on something like that hanger that I have it should already be it should be damp not dripping with water so if it's still dripping wet, I'm glad you asked that question, thank you. If it's still dripping wet, wring it out, brush it, wring it out. Sit it in a dry bath, let it drip dry over a clothes horse over the back if you can. Only hang it on a clothes hanger when you've done most of it. And there's something else I should, should point out here, and in reference to your question, who has a uh, digi suit here? And who has a planter suit? So, depending on whether you have had them or not, depends on the weight. Because these things, when they get wet, they get really wet. And this, at the moment, doesn't weigh very much. But when it's wet and it's full of water, it's just polyfill inside, right? When these get wet, they weigh a lot. Now, I wash these separately in my washing machine, and I wash these on hot. I know that sounds weird, but I wash these on hot because this thing, this is uh, one of Queenie's thighs. This is sitting right here, and it gets hot, and it gets, it absorbs a lot of sweat, even though I'm wearing underarm. So this gets stinky really quickly. I put this in the washing machine, and then I put this in the dryer as well, because this is just regular material with polyfill inside. Now, if your polyfill gets all chunky, there's two things you can do. You can just literally play with it and pull it apart inside, like this. And it helps bring the shape of it back. Same thing with tails. If your tails, if you do choose your wash, your washing, if you tend to, to, if you choose, words are hard. If you choose to wash your tails in washing machine, which is totally fine for most tails, check with your maker first, You'll get a situation where you get all of the polyfill goes to the bottom, right? Again, I, this is how I do it. I put my thumb in here and I just push the polyfill and help it sort itself out. I just found a hole in the tail. This. Oh. 
it happens. I knew it, they knew it was there. So you just push it down and then you can shake it. And it helps even out the polyfill. Polyfill doesn't like getting wet, but you can resurrect it. If it gets really bad, I sometimes open up a little hole and then I restock the nail. Because polyfill can be cheap. Um, so yeah, make sure your soup is reasonably dry before you put it on the hanger. Um, do not put your soup away in a box until it's dry. Do not put your soup on a, a, in a bag before it's dry. Because again, bad things. A lot of people I know have hangers with plastic bags over the top. That's a really good idea if you don't wear your soup a lot because it helps protect the soup from, from uh, dust and stuff. And the other thing to bear in mind is do not put your soup in your windows, on your windowsill or in your window because bright sunlight can change your soup's coloring. I've actually met someone who left their soup on a windowsill for a long time and it started to fade. I have a, um, I have a fox in my car right, that sits just in front of the dash. And he's kind of wedged in right at the front of the window. The bit that faces me still looks like he did the day I bought him. But his back, which is against the glass, has been bleached by the sun. So don't do that to your first suit. All right, um, everyone should carry a, a repair kit. Now this is a little repair kit that I, I built up over time. I'm not going to go into the various different sewing patterns that you can do, but everybody should learn some basic stitches. You've got your running stitch, right? Literally in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, blah, 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 blah. You can learn fancier stitches, but the one I think is most important for fursuits is something called the Henson stitch, named after Jim Henson, right? Of Muppets fame, who uh, and this type of stitch, it's got another name and my, my brain is being stupid and I can't remember what it is. But the idea behind this stitch is that it's invisible. Which means, uh, if you are going to be repairing a fursuit that has a hole in it, you can repair it in a way that, um, if I can describe how the stitch works, instead of attaching two pieces of material together like that and having stitching in between, it pulls the material together as you're stitching, and the stitch hides in the middle. Ladder stitch. Ladder stitch. Thank you. That's what it's called. So um, there are plenty of cool tutorials online. I'm not going to try and teach you how to do it here because, you know, if I do it, if I demonstrate it here, the folks on the back are not going to be able to see it. But those are the two things you should. Um, I would say that you really need to learn how to use. Get some good needles and get comfortable threading a needle. And if you need a needle threader, that's okay. I still use one. Um, next, let's talk about thread. If you go into most um, sewing shops and you buy thread, you're gonna buy cotton thread, right? You're gonna buy cotton thread for you know making clothes or, or pretty things for Thanksgiving. That's not going to work in the first year. Why? It'll break. Yeah. Really, really, really fine. They're really, really not cool stuff. Now, I have some quilting thread here, which at the push, I can find it. This is harder to break, but it still breaks, right? I use this when I'm making bandanas. But what you really need to look for is really tough thread that's used for things like making parachutes or is um, a really, really tough uh, outdoor thread, that's okay as well. Sometimes you will have to use basic cotton thread if what you're repairing, um, if what you're repairing is going to be more visible. But if it's stuff around like the head or bodysuit parts, go ahead and use thick thread. Because if no one can see it, but it helps your suit stay together, it doesn't really matter. 
Let me show you. If it sounds bad, I want to show you Queen's Crotch. <laughs> All right? I don't know if I can. You go out. Her hips always get in the way. All right, so. Where is it, Queenie? You're such a pain in my side. All right, so. Crotches always get a lot of bad treatment. It looks like I've got another hole that's developing. Yay, holes! Um, and using really strong thread in parts of the suit where it's going to be put through a lot of abuse is a lot easier than using cotton thread that's just going to break every time you move. So this is actually the surge. Did I just stand on you? I'm sorry. This is actually a surge joint here. Um, with really strong thread and a surge, a serger is a good, nice tool to have once you get confident hand stitching, but you shouldn't be buying a serger right now because you have to learn how to sew by hand before you then use machines. Um, a good sewing machine, meanwhile, is a good investment if you feel comfortable running your suit through a sewing machine. Most people don't. Stitching by hand is more important. And it's more important on the road than having a sewing machine or a surgery. I have my sewing machine and my surgery here with me, but that's because I, I, was, I was gonna have it here as a spare in case something happened to my suits because I haven't worn them in such a long time. But um, you can see from this, this joint here, that's been Surge. So does everyone know what a serger is? A serger is like a fancy sewing machine. So a sewing machine just goes in and out, in and out, in and out, and it has two different threads, like one on the bottom, one on the top, and it joins them together and creates a nice strong stitch. A serger has three or four um, different threads that it brings together and creates a super strong but flexible edge, edged stitch. So it can't fray, it can't pull, and it allows it to be very strong and very soft and, and very um, uh, long lasting. Most commercial clothes today are serge. Like if you buy a pair of pants or I bet if you looked inside that shirt around the around the joints, they'd be like you can tell whether it's serge or not. If you look at my hoodie here, can you see it? The stitch kind of goes over the top. That is a serge stitch, and it makes it super strong. It stops it from throwing it allows it to stay really, uh, really strong. All right, so thread, a good set of needles, and then one or two of these. Good, strong, good quality sewing scissors. I use this one for material which you probably won't need to do because you're gonna just be doing repairs. This is if I'm making a suit or I'm working on a suit. Um, this is for cutting thread. Yes, you can pull and tear cotton thread, but when you're working with higher strength uh, threads, a good strong set of scissors is really important. And don't let other people touch your scissors. Don't let them cut paper with it. Paper, you're nodding at the back. It's it true, hurts. isn't it? It hurts so bad. Um, you it should not cut out. anything but material with your sewing scissors because paper will blunt these suckers in such a short amount of time. And if these are not sharp, what happens to the material you're cutting? It doesn't cut. It doesn't cut, it shears, you end up with um, loose threads, and a loose thread can get accidentally pulled, and then before you know it, you have a problem. All right, this should also be in your repair kit. Shugu, if you have feet, Shugu is your friend. First suit pores, especially if they are based on shoes, if they're outdoor shoes, with uh, outdoor cloths with shoes in them, they will ultimately need repairing at some point. This kind of stuff is useful because it helps if you've got a shoe bolt in the fursuit, it can help secure the shoe to the base of the, of the fursuit. It can also be used to help glue on fur that's kind of come loose around the front of the shoe. 
but not all fursuit uh, not all fursuit feet are based around shoes. Sometimes they're sock based. So check with your maker. Now, what brand was that that you? Ah, uh, this is just this is boots and gloves. And this is this is actually shoe goo. I don't know what this one is. This is e, this is the old E6000. The new stuff's not any good. Um, but then the other thing you need is this. Hot glue. Hot glue saves so many problems. Right? So. Um, I put Jimmy Changa, he's not here, that's it. I put Jimmy Changa through the washing machine a couple of days ago because he's washing machine friendly and he came out and he lost a tooth. Hot glue, back off. Job's good. Hot glue is not a permanent fix, but it can get you through a convention. And all I'm worrying about now is the hole that I noticed in the crotch because it's just going to bug me the entire convention unless I fix her. And I can't fix her because I don't have spare material. Which brings me to hot glue. No. <laughs> <laughs> what should you ask your What should you ask me for? Spare material. Spare material. Right. Okay. How do I put this? If your maker is one of the top makers out there, who charge you four or five thousand bucks for a suit, the chances are they have a repair policy. And I should have mentioned this earlier, I'm sorry. Before making any repairs to your suit, check with your suit maker first. Because there are suit makers out there who, if you try and fix your suit and you cock it up, will go, sucks to be you. <laughs> and most fursuit makers out there are artists who will go, yeah, I can fix that for you. Your suit is only this old and I will do it for free, or uh, your suit is older, I will help you refurbish it, this is how much it will cost. So check with your, food, your suit maker before you do it. Now, in the case of Queenie and Chimmy, they're actually made by the same suit maker and she knows me and she is okay with me fixing the suit. And so when I picked up the second pair of paws I have with me, second or maybe third pair, I don't have my, my first pair. Queenie has stump paws, and I know that sounds terrible, but she has stump paws and she has regular paws. And when I picked up her spare pair of paws, I said to the maker, do you have any of our fur left? And they said, yes. I said, great, can I have it, please? And she said, yes. Fur suit makers, some of them will give you spares, especially if your suit is weird. Like, how many suits have you seen with this? Right? Not that many. What? <laughs> so, I actually, there is another suit with hair like this. I've seen it. It's in the Pacific Northwest, I think. Um, if your suit maker has spare material and doesn't mind giving it to you, get some. If you are confident in doing more extreme repairs. But again, it's like if you are someone who is happy to put a patch in your jeans, or darn a sock or fix a hole in a, in a favorite jacket, that might be an option for you. If you are someone who goes, no, I don't want to do that, don't do it. So then crotch repair I did on Queenie that now he's doing again because I run around too much. Um, I basically, this entire patch here had to be new fur because the old fur had started to fall apart because the material had rubbed together to the point that she had bald spots. And the last thing you want is a bald patch. So I had to make a pattern, cut that out, and repair it. Same on her, which arm is it? One of her arms did the same thing, right? The, the material started to go, and I had, to, I, I had the material, so I was able to cut a pattern part out, carefully unstitch it, and put it back together. With something, by the way, that you should all get. In your toolkit. Seam ripper. Everyone know what this is? <clears throat> you put this in and it allows you to undo stitches without damaging your fursuit. If you have a very tight fursuit because you're like me and you spent too much time during COVID not working out and putting on weight and you know that you cannot spare a couple of uh, inches or half an inch or a quarter of an inch by cutting the seam off and putting a new one on, 
The seam rippers are a lifesaver because they allow you to rip out the existing seam, reuse that material, and put in a new patch as you need to. Um, you're just plaguing me with music today, but aren't you? <laughs> In case you didn't know, I used to be a classical musician, so I'm like really triggered by, by my brain just goes, oh, let's figure out what that music is. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, if you, if you feel more confident in repairs as time goes on, ask your maker if you can have some spare material, even if it's not because you want to do the repair, but if you are at a convention and there happens to be someone there who you trust who can help you make the repair, it is so much easier and I didn't bring any spare material with me to this con. But that is essentially where it is. Now, I've done feet, I've done palms, I've done body suits, I've done brushing, I've done washing. Do we have time? Questions, and then I'll do the, the scary stuff. So, I'm getting a suit uh, next month. It'll be ready by my hats forecast, and if I'm correct, they're the only maker that bases their heads off of like martial arts headgear. Are there any special considerations for how I have to wash that? Thank you. I love Queen, but it's very hard for them. So, by hats forecast, I would ask them. Okay. If they use a strange construction technique that nobody else has done, that should be your first port of call. Because believe me, if you try and put a suit head in a washing machine that has not been tested by a maker for a washing machine, they are going to get very upset and you are going to get very upset. It is a bit like if you spend, um, imagine you just, you own a classic car and you just spent $10,000 restoring that classic car, getting the engine just the way it was when it left the factory, getting everything looking perfect, and then you took it to uh, Laguna Seca, and you raced it around the track, and you hit it into a wall. The person who helped you restore that car is A, going to be really annoyed because you dinged their handiwork, but also they'll probably then say to you, you do realize they didn't design the car to work like that. And the same thing with suits. You have to ask your maker, what, did, what are your care instructions? Some people will tell you that slicker brushes are okay. I am telling you that slicker brushes are not okay. They are. They will damage your suit faster. These are much kinder. Um, so ask them. Any other questions? Is dry cleaning bad for suits? Yes. Because dry cleaning uses chemicals. And... The plastics don't like it. You should always wash them by hand. There are there are exceptions, I believe, but I would say do not dry clean the brush. What kind of brush is that? This is I think they call these a finish brush for brushes. Um, I'm getting this. Is that what you, you, you? I just got my suit, but yes, I've used those on horses before. Yeah, this is like a finish brush. It's a very hard bristle. I mean, if I do that on my, you can hear, right? It's a very hard bristle. I mean, if you, I can pass this around. It's got Queen's fur on it, and probably some chimneys as well. Um, but it's, you can, I like the ones you can actually put your hand in. You can not put your hand inside. They've got like a little strap on them. And they're what you use to finish a horse's coat. It's what gives them, a lot of people think um, that horses get shiny coats because you feed them something special or you use a particular shampoo. No, horses get shiny coats because of brushes like that, because it, it's the final bit. And sometimes you'll see, and I'll do this with my first suit too, somebody who's brushing a horse might actually go like this with the brush, and then like this with their hand, and like that. And you can actually do that with the first suit too. The one thing I didn't tell you, and I feel really bad about, so I'm gonna dig one out, because I know I've got some in here. Ah. Carry some of these around for you. Dryer sheets. So three things. Dryer sheets are a great way. You put this in your feet and you put this in your head. You scratch it up and it helps absorb any moisture that's left. But also, this is a great way of stopping sapping. If you're somewhere like, um, oh, if, if you're at a convention of a high altitude, for example, 
um, or your summer where the air conditioning is really not good, these dryer sheets are great for allowing the bird to lie flat. So I have been known to have a brush in one hand, dryer sheet, brush, dryer sheet, brush, dryer sheet, and it makes it lie flat. Absolutely, categorically, 100% happy with it. You can use a steam cleaner on a fursuit, but you need to be extremely careful with it. One pass, brush it. Now, I'm not going to pretend to be someone who uses a steam cleaner much because I don't. But does everybody know who Omnom and Splat are? Yeah. Right. You will see them at this call. I think they are here. I have them. Yes, they are here. Yeah. Uh, Omnom and Splat are two of the most accomplished pursuit maintenance people I know. They're also wonderful people. They use steam cleaning, I believe to straighten fibers in their suits. Because over time, the fibers will get, you can see a little bit on cleaning here, they get not straight, right? And you can use a little bit of steam from a steam cleaner or a little bit of heat from a hair dryer where you go, heat off, heat off, heat off. The idea is to just expose it very briefly to a tiny amount of hot air and you can send hot with steam and then brush it immediately, and it helps the fibers that have dried strangely and got all kinked up, it allows those fibers to relax and you brush it straight, and it then aligns the fibers and gets it to lay flat. It's, that's an advanced technique, but I don't think anybody here should try it until they're comfortable with all the other things. But if your first suit starts to look like it's um, not cute and fluffy anymore, then you can use that to straighten the fibers. As long as you keep brushing your fursuit while it dries, you shouldn't have a problem. But if your fursuit has got wet and you brushed it and then walked away, and then it's dried and you haven't kept it brushing it while it dries, you may have issues. Um, and by the way, I don't mean you brush it constantly until it dries. Ain't got no time for that. But you brush it, go away, do something, come back, brush it a bit more, and just make sure that as you're brushing it, you line up everything up. All right, and, and the other thing to point out is this brush, this comb here. Where's my uh, finish brush gone? So this is a really great way of getting all the fur out. Because this brush does get very Ow, you bit me. You drew blood. I'm gonna have to give you a name now. Ow. This is just metal comb, but yeah, I drew blood. Ow. Ow. I'm fine. I'll just drop in a flare all the way back. Um, but yeah, just see how it comes out. Alrighty, uh, any other questions? Or are we good? Was that, if you like that, was that useful? Yes. Yeah. Alright, would you like to come to my other panels later? Oh, a couple questions. Did you want to edit? Uh, if there's, if there's one in flare around the corner, I'll grab one in a second. I have one in first aid. Oh, thank you. I would love one. Thank you. You're an absolute star. Thank you. I don't think I've ever done that before. I run a company, right? I run a company. We make YouTube videos about cars. And um, we just did a road trip to San Diego back, right? And as part of it, I made a big, long document saying, OK, in the event there is an accident, you know, car one has to tell car two, and blah, blah, blah. Fur cuts? I had a brief first aid kit. <laughs> When my, when my company requires me, when I am the boss and I have to be, oh wow, that's so cool. Um, 
when I am the boss and I have to be all like grown up and stuff, I have everything with me. But otherwise, <laughs> nope. All right, so uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for putting up with my random, not quite British banter. I have my accent been shifting. Um, I'm a vocal chameleon, so sometimes I sound really less British than others. Um, come to my other panel, sir. Uh, in about an hour, um, I'll be doing, what am I doing? Vocal techniques for fursuiters. So it shows you how, how you can be heard in a fursuit, how you can use your voice in a fursuit. How you can learn to do things like the Queenie voice or, um, Hi, how you can quiz me for because of the character like, hey, hi. <laughs> um, learn how to make voices, how to be heard in fursuit, how to breathe, how to get the sound out. How to use your body to emphasize what it is you say. It's kind of like a performance one. one And then tomorrow, I will be doing a performance class on gender performance. So um, we'll talk about things like how to be, how to have a particularly gendered performance. This is useful if your character has a different gender to the one that you have yourself, or if it's about emphasizing a character's gender beyond your own, and we'll deal with multiple different gender portrayals, including non-binary. And again, that will touch things like voices, so for example, how you could have a, like your voice might sound like this, and then suddenly you might be, hey, how's it going, Jimmy Jane the Fox? And how to do stuff like that, okay? So that's one of my other panels. <laughs> I do voice it in my work. <laughs> Um, so, uh, come to that, and then I'm doing some other stuff as well, Tree of Remembrance, and also Campfire. Um, I really strongly encourage everybody, if you lost someone, and you want to remember them, you want to have some peaceful time, uh, come to the Tree of Remembrance, you can write, your na write the name of the person, the message you want to put, um, you can hang it on the tree, and then, uh, the Tree of Remembrance is just a way for us to remember people who were with us and aren't anymore. And without pulling a t-shirt the wrong way, that's in the of course. The one below Dog Bomb. If you don't know who Dog Bomb is, he was a wonderful first shooter who um, had ALS. And uh, he said that when he died, nobody would remember him. It's coming up on three years, I think, since Dog Bomb left us, and we still remember him. So come along to that as well. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to go and pack up and get ready for my next panel. And uh, thank you. If you want to keep me wrapped, come along tomorrow.